Hi, I'm Courtney. Welcome to our garden where today I hope you'll join me as I'm going to be planting this four by eight raised bed square foot gardening style. Before I start planting, I'll give you a quick tour of the garden just to show you what's going on right now here. These are June-bearing strawberry plants. They're sequoia strawberry plants. And for this strawberry patch right here, this is the third season. So production is probably gonna start declining on the third year. That's usually what I notice. So every year in the early spring, I usually take runners and I plant them in a new location and remove the blossoms that first year so that the plants can spend their energy on getting big and strong so that the second year they will produce big. So this year I didn't do this. I think I'm gonna be moving. So I will probably just take the runners when I get ready to move and take them with me so that I don't have to buy new bare root strawberry plants. But doing that, taking the runners every year and putting them in a new location, then you can rotate your strawberry plants and have a big harvest every year so that every year you have a strawberry pat that is in its second year producing big. And that's just a way to keep your strawberries going for years and years without having to buy new ones. Essentially, you're just always having new free plants from your strawberry patch. And here's the garlic bed. I have one garlic bed here and I have another one right over there. And this is soft neck garlic. It's Enchilium red garlic and Sicilian, and I planted it on October 15th. It's every single year I save my garlic and replant it so I never have to buy seed garlic. It's going to be ready the end of May, early June, around there, and it's looking really good. So if you plant garlic and you've never grown it before and you're wondering about the brown tips on the leaves, this is completely normal in the spring because it's basically stress from extreme cold temperatures that you can get overnight in the springtime. And look at all this nice new growth right here. It looks really good. If all of the leaves start looking like this, the plants probably need to be fertilized. And the way I do that is I use liquid fish emulsion and I mix it with water and I foliar feed, which means I water, I basically water the fertilizer in, but with the watering can, I'll get the leaves wet too. And that just gives them a little boost. And you can do that every couple of weeks um, up until about three weeks before you harvest. In this bed, I have badger flame beets growing. Here are the little seedlings right here. You can kind of see them. Um, these are from row seven seeds. And this is what they're gonna look like. Aren't they pretty? They're so beautiful, I can't wait. And these beets actually are supposed to have less of an earthy flavor. So I can't wait to see how they taste, but they're just so pretty. I'm excited about those. And then right here on the end of this bed, I've got Beauregard snow peas. And they're gonna climb right over this trellis over here to this garlic bed where there's another row of them growing. So basically they're gonna grow up the cattle panel trellis and meet each other in the middle and these are going to be purple peas again they're from row seven and i'll show you what they're going to look like they're purple spark there they're purple even after you cook them so they're going to be so pretty i'm excited about these too so i read that you're not supposed to plant peas next to garlic i guess they don't do well, but we're gonna test that out and see how the, both the garlic and the snow peas do growing together and um, see if that rule holds true. I always like to test things and then prove whether they're gonna work or not. And then in this bed, I've got broccoli growing. I just direct sowed these seeds last week before it started to rain and now we've got these little seedlings. You can always tell the difference between broccoli seedlings and weeds because the broccoli ones are they look like little butterflies. So I've got three rows of broccoli growing in this four by eight bed. Okay, so now we're gonna get planting here in this four by eight bed. I just filled it. My last video is actually about um, one way to fill these deeper raised beds if you'd like to watch that. So we're planting fresh, the first time I've ever planted in this raised bed. 
and I've got this watering grid on top right here and this is going to serve as my plant spacing grid and my watering grid and I'll show you how it's going to work as a watering grid when we're done planting but you can see here that these squares are approximately one foot square so we've got four of them and then obviously we've got eight of them going this way so I've never actually applied actual square foot gardening rules in my garden. This is the 11th season that I've been growing here in upstate South Carolina. And I've been growing in raised beds the whole time. At the previous house I lived at, I had, uh, I don't know, I don't remember, 10 or 15 raised beds. And then here um, there are 28 raised beds that I've been growing in. And I've just been growing like in rows, you know, rows of corn, rows of lettuce, rows of everything in these raised beds but i'm going to be downsizing big time when i move so i'm really looking into more space saving gardening gardening in smaller spaces and square foot gardening from what i've seen and read um, it not only saves you space but it also saves you water and weeding and time and everything so i'm really excited to implement this and this watering grid is going to be amazing because it's going to help take care of watering too. So in this bed, I'm going to attempt to plant right on, I'm going to be doing a trellis and that's going to be a whole other video because I'll show you how I'm going to build that trellis and then exactly how I'm going to train the plants and what I'm going to plant. So there's so much information out there about square foot gardening. There are some really good books and tons of resources if you're interested in researching that. I'm just going to kind of cover the basics as I'm planting mine right here and I can tell you what I'm going to be planting and how many plants in each grid and everything like that. I don't know about tomato plants because I, I read that you know some people plant like 10 or 11 indeterminate tomato plants in a four by four square and I, I just don't know how that happens because those plants get humongous. <laughs> Um, I, I end up caging both my indeterminate and my t determinate tomato plants. Indeterminate tomato plants will get massive if you let them, so I don't know how you can fit that many plants in a 4x4 four four square. I guess if you try it and you can prove that it works for you, then you know more power to you. In my 4x8 beds, as far as tomato plants go, I, I fit four plants, um, and that's it because I like to allow maximum airspace to try to prevent diseases and it's easier to prune them if you're if you want to prune them and it's easier to harvest and everything so I've just experimented a lot and I've just found the best luck with four plants in a four by eight raised bed in this bed I'm I don't I'm not going to put any tomato plants I might put a pepper plant in there I'm not sure yet because pepper plants I've also found that you know they they can get pretty big and they like space too they like airflow and it's it's easier to harvest them too just like tomato plants with I I, I fit like 12 plants in a four by eight raised bed maybe if you have one plant that's a more compact variety I'm going to be putting sweet garlic from row seven I started these inside I'm really excited about these they have the sweetness of leeks combined with savory garlic all in one allium and to figure out the spacing of those so those are those need a six inch spacing between the plants so if you figure that you have a 12 foot square or I mean 12 foot 12 inch square here you're gonna divide that by six inches which is your spacing and then you're gonna get two so you you do it one way and then you do it the other way and then you multiply two by two and then you get four that's how you do that math i have it written down here because i use notes for everything this is like part of my gardening journal i write all of this stuff down just so that i can remember it from year to year and then i can write down like what worked and what didn't work and everything so to start out for those sweet garlic um plants after i harden them off in the next couple of weeks i'm going to be planting those in these squares four per square. So I'm going to have, you know, like one here, one here, one here, and one here. And that's how you space out your square. I'm also going to be planting Delfino cilantro, also from row seven seeds. Those have a subtle citrusy flavor. I have, I've never grown it before, but from the description, it sounds really good because it might not be as strong as traditional cilantro, but I think it's going to be really delicious. And also they are slow to bolt plants, um, which is definitely very helpful here in South Carolina when it gets really, really hot. I think one plant per square of cilantro is probably going to be the best bet. So 
if you've grown your plants before, you can kind of just use your best judgment and your experience to figure out how many plants you want to try to plant in a square. And then all of the rest of the space I'm going to use for lettuce. I usually grow cut and come again lettuce. I've grown head lettuce before. I've had the best luck starting head lettuce indoors and then transplanting it outdoors because it takes a lot longer for the heads to form. And I'm usually late planting. It's April 13th and I could have planted lettuce at least a few weeks ago, at least um, here in upstate South Carolina. But of course I'm running a little bit late. That's just how I always am. I'm going to plant mostly lettuce that can be harvested at its early stage at the baby early leaf lettuce stage because it only takes about a month for that to happen all of these varieties that i'm going to be planting are slow bolt varieties so if you are planting them in the spring and you want to try to grow them for as long as you can in the summertime the slower bolting ones i would definitely recommend some of these are newer ones that i've never grown before other ones i have grown before like freckles I've grown and the trucus lettuce I've grown in the summertime and with success. And I, I grow those with the cut and come again method, which means when they reach the baby leaf lettuce stage, or you can do it when they get bigger too, you, you plant them more, more densely than you would like one head of lettuce. When they get to be about six inches tall, when they're growing, you can come out and harvest them one to two inches above the soil, and then they'll grow back. So you can keep harvesting from those plants. I've found that I usually get like two or three harvests out of that plant because after that, uh, they start to get kind of bitter and um, tough. So then I just pull the plants out and compost them or feed them to the chickens and then start over again. Okay, I'm going to get my seeds out. Just in case you're looking for a more convenient way to store your seeds. There's how I figured out how to store mine and I'm happy with this at the moment. I like the handle. I can just carry it right out to the garden and it's actually a photo storage box. I'm sure you've probably seen this before, but I really love how this works. Um, I've got them like all labeled and everything. Like here are my cucumbers and they all just fit nicely into this case. There's Kit Kit snoozing right there. He's our garden kitty. He's always out here with us. If she's not chasing crickets, she's taking a snooze. She doesn't bother the birds or dig up the plants out here. She's just very nice, sweet company out here. Lettuce is one of the best crops to succession plant. So you can plant some lettuce now and then 10 to 14 days later plant some more so that um, one, especially in the summertime, if one plant bolts, then you'll have another one coming up. And so, you know, you have a better chance of always having like some nice uh, baby lettuce to harvest and using the cut and come again method. If you succession plant, I usually like to do it uh, like every two weeks or so. So some of these I will probably succession plant. If you're wondering like if it gets really hot in the summertime and your lettuce you're kind of done trying to battle with growing lettuce if you live in a really really hot climate. Things that you can plant following lettuce like bush beans would be really good. They are nice and compact. You could definitely plant bush beans and using the square foot gardening method. Uh, herbs are also really good to plant. I will probably plant like some basil if I'm done planting lettuce in this bed in the heat of the summer. So the garlic, I think I'm going to do four rows of that. And then I'm probably going to do two rows of, or not rows, squares. I keep talking in rows. I have to get used to saying squares. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the sweet garlic is going to be four squares. Cilantro, I think, is going to be two squares. And then I'm probably going to do maybe six squares of lettuce to start out with. And then in a couple of weeks, plant three more squares. And then a couple of weeks after that, three more squares. So I think that's how I'm gonna space everything out here. I'm just gonna do rattlesnake beans on the ends right here. So I'm gonna do four squares of rattlesnake beans here. And I'm gonna do four squares of rattlesnake beans over there. And then in between, I'm going to do my Space Master cucumbers. So I'm going to put that right there. Okay, here's going to be the cilantro. And then here I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different kinds of lettuce in these squares. And then these are going to be the ones that I'm going to come in and do a couple weeks and then a couple weeks. So these are going to be my succession plantings right here.
Now, I usually, I have not spent much time paying attention to the direction in which my trellises are facing and um, my plants when I plant in the garden because this garden is pretty much direct sun all day except for the very back part. It's almost five o'clock in the evening right now and it's shady right here but from the time the sun comes up until it goes down this is probably at least eight hours of full sun right here. Um, now if you are trying to pay attention to direction from what I've heard if you plant your taller plants on the north side they will help shade your shorter plants that you plant on the south side. I've never actually tried that. I've had success planting. Right now I'm looking at my trellises. I have them facing in every different direction and the beans and cucumbers and peas that I've grown grow just fine in whatever direction. So I think it's really all about testing out how things work out in your particular garden and microclimate because every garden is different. So. It is always an experiment to see what works best for you. All right, I'm gonna start out with these rattlesnake bean seeds. I thought I was gonna plant them tomorrow when I start building the trellis and for our next video, but I think I'm just gonna plant these right now. I actually, I have some rattlesnake beans that one of my kids rescued out of the garden while we were doing some spring cleanup work and they found that they had started to germinate as we were pulling some Bermuda grass out of the bed. So she actually took them and just put them in a couple of uh, old containers that we had and put them in the windowsill and they're doing really well right now. She knew that she had to save them because she knew that it was going to get cold again and we'd most likely have a frost. So she wanted to save the plants. And that's just one of the awesome things about gardening with kids. They just kind of learn things. You don't really even have to formally teach them anything. They just kind of learn as they go. Those anyways are doing really well and I'm probably going to plant those on that end tomorrow because I can't really plant those till I get the trellis going because they are ready to start climbing up. So technically we are succession planting some rattlesnake beans out here today. These were seeds from our garden. These are heirloom rattlesnake beans that I save every year in our garden. We are growing these. These are from 2022 and I'm pretty sure that they're going to germinate just fine. So these seeds are always so pretty. They're one of my favorite bean seeds because they're so pretty. Okay so I'm going to do because rattle beans I usually plant beans like every four inches so I'm just going to put one here, put one here, put one here, and I might be able to tuck something in here later, like succession plant some more lettuce or something right here if we find that we have some more space here. So that's the awesome thing about square foot gardening. You have it all nice and tidy and organized, and then you can always find some space to tuck something in here, here, and there, and wherever. So I'm pretty excited about this method right here. All right, so there's one square already planted. And do three more. One, two, three. Moving along to the next one. Now I'm going to do the Space Master cucumbers in this back row right here. I have never tried this variety before, but Space Master cucumbers are supposed to be a little bit more compact. So I'm still going to grow them up the trellis, but. Um, we usually grew, let's see, the National Pickling Cucumbers, if we were going to do pickles. Um, and what's the other one? The Green Tasty Cucumbers. They're English cucum cucumbers that are really delicious, uh, fresh. But I'm feeling, I don't know, I just feel like I want to try something different this year. And because I'm trying to downsize, I'm testing out some more compact things. So let's try out these Space Master ones here. Cucumbers, of course, they're like, I think, I don't know, I think I plant in mine usually every 8 to 12 inches. I think in this case I'm going to do, I'm going to plant a couple of seeds just to make sure because of germination risk of them not germinating. I'll probably put two in each square, but I'll probably end up thinning them down. So I think maybe one cucumber plant per square is going to suffice. 
we always end up giving cucumbers away to friends and family because we have so many of them, but that's just one of the joys of gardening. But my oldest daughter, she adores cucumbers and she will eat like two whole cucumbers in one sitting. Just throwing these rocks out of here. Oh so yeah, so here's, but this is going really quick. Let's see, one, two, three, four. This is the fourth square of cucumbers already planted. And again, with the cucumbers to these squares, if I find that we've got space right here, I might tuck something in there. Like even some marigold plants or basil is pretty compact. Basil would do well in there. I wouldn't recommend planting perennial ones like chives unless you're planning on digging your chives up. I put my chives in grow bags um, because they're perennials and they keep coming back year after year and I divide them every year or every other year. So I just always have free chives, but it's nice to have them in grow bags because they don't, you know, like take up space in the garden bed. I had it once where I had them on the edge of a four by four raised bed and they were like all in the grass, like all over the place. So I just figured out that it's my own personal preference. I like to have chives and grow bags and mint. Mint will absolutely go nuts. Um, so grow bags are a really good idea for mint. So I don't know that I would recommend um, or oregano herbs like that in a square foot gardening space unless you're planning on digging them up and moving them somewhere else when you're done with them being in here or they will quickly take over your whole entire bed. <laughs> now I'm going to plant the cilantro. So I think I'm, I'm going to try maybe two plants in each square to see how they do and I'll do two squares. I can't wait to make some fresh salsa. Usually I do a lot of canning and canned salsa but this year I'm just going to try to eat mostly fresh just because everything I have going on and everything. Um, so I cannot wait to use this cilantro and some fresh salsa this summer. Another rock. So I think I'm just going to plant, I'm going to plant a couple of seeds right here. And then I'm going to plant a couple of seeds right here. So that's the cilantro. And then I'm going to do this square right next to that one. Put a couple of seeds here, a couple of seeds here. And maybe I'll do three. Just in my past experience, cilantro can be a little bit tricky as far as germination goes. So it never hurts to add a couple of extra seeds if you have them. Okay, so here's, these are two cilantro squares done. This beautiful Delfino cilantro. This is Osterly lettuce, baby early leaf lettuce within 28 days. The spacing is two inches. You can do, I already did my math before I came out here so that I didn't have to sit here and do the math as I was planting. I just figured out the spacing and the math and did it before I even got started to help me save some time. So I've got 36 plants that I can fit in a 12 inch square. So what I did, I just made these little furrows with my hand and I'm probably gonna do like nine in this row, nine here, nine here, nine here for a total of 36 plants in this in this square. I've always grown like baby leaf lettuce, cut and come again lettuce pretty densely because the nice thing is when it does get hot, it kind of shades itself. You don't have to water as much. When it comes to this baby leaf lettuce, planting densely is not a bad thing. But if you're doing head lettuce, of course, you can't plant densely because it has to grow big and form a head. And so like if you plant a few seeds, you definitely have to end up thinning that. That's why starting the head lettuce inside is a lot easier because you have more control over the germination inside, but you have to have the motivation and the planning ahead to start those indoors at the right time. And I didn't have that this year, so I am direct sowing all of my lettuce. Okay, so I lettuce does not have to be very deep at all. It's like barely under the soil surface. Actually, I think most lettuce actually needs light to germinate, believe it or not. So you don't want to get it too deep or it's not going to germinate at all. Next square is this Vivian Romaine. So these are more compact heads. You can see what it looks like right here. So you can plant these a little bit closer together. They're tightly bunched heads. 
So you can also harvest these as baby greens in just a few weeks. So that's always really nice, especially if you're worried about it getting too hot. So you can basically do four of these based on the recommended spacing on the package. Okay, so I'm gonna put a few seeds in each. I will have to come back and thin these if I want to harvest these as the full size heads. Next square, I'm gonna plant some trucus. I absolutely love this. These are mini romaine heads. They're beautiful in like um, Caesar salads. They turn a beautiful deep purple color. Last year, I started these indoors and grew them as full size heads and they were so pretty. But you can also, I've also grown them as like baby leaf lettuce, cut and come again lettuce. So they're versatile and so pretty. The interesting thing when you grow dark purple lettuce like this, if you've never done it before, if you start it indoors, it's green under the grow lights, but then when you get it outside and it's in like full sun exposure, that's when it turns dark purple. So if you grow it like in the shade, for example, in a shadier spot, it might not be quite as dark purple as it would be in the full sun. But I absolutely love this lettuce. I would highly recommend it. And I've grown it in the summertime here before too. I actually grew it underneath my hoop house in a raised bed in the winter time, like all through the winter. And of course it wasn't purple in there because it didn't get as much sun in the, in the winter time. But I'm gonna put these four in here because just in case I want it to reach that pretty full size head. But after 28 days, you can start harvesting it as baby lettuce. These are probably pelleted. Okay, yes, they are pelleted. So this right here is an awesome way to grow lettuce because it is so much easier to handle these little pellets than it is the little tiny itty bitty seeds that spill all over the place. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put one of these in each little spot here. The only thing, like once they get wet, they need to stay wet because it's got like this clay coating on the outside. So, okay, and just lightly cover them. And there we go. There is the trucus square. Okay, and then we have freckles lettuce. Freckles lettuce is so pretty. It's a really pretty green, and then it's got like dark purple um, markings on it, freckles on it. I've grown this in the summertime. I have grown this under my um, hinged hoop house unheated throughout the winter here, and it grows beautifully. It's super versatile and easy to grow. Um, I like to grow this as the cut and come again leaf lettuce. So I'm going to do just like I did that first row. I'm just going to make four little furrows here with my finger and just kind of spread them in here because you can do 36 little plants of freckles lettuce in a square according to the recommended spacing. So yeah, it's hard to be super exact here because these seeds are so tiny. But I kind of do this when I plant carrots. I just put a few seeds like every few inches. And there's so much less thinning involved that way than if you just like broadcast a huge row. But then again, when you're planting densely for um, cut and come again lettuce, you don't have to be quite as concerned about that. So I've put shade fabric over lettuce and cilantro in the summertime before. So I think that maybe the trellis will help shade the lettuce and the cilantro in this bed. We'll see how it goes. It's kind of like an experiment. But So now we've got the buttercrunch lettuce, um, which you can fit four per square. These form compact heads and they're bolt resistant. So another good one that you can plant in the spring and attempt to grow it into the summer and see how it does. Oh, yeah, a skunk definitely just sprayed. Hopefully it didn't spray Kit Kit. Where is Kit Kit? I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna quickly plant these. Phew! It's in the middle of the day. Are skunks supposed to spray in the middle of the day? I don't know. I don't know about that. Phew! Very stinky. Okay, so I'm just going to drop a few seeds and then very lightly cover it up. Then we've got one more square to plant. And last but not least, the Tegan lettuce. I saved this one for last. I'm the most excited about this lettuce right here. This is from row seven seeds also. So this lettuce right here is best harvested at maturity, which is about 65 days in this case. This lettuce is a cross between iceberg and red leaf lettuce. It's very resist resilient and slow bolting. So I feel confident planting this at this time right here, because I feel like if I let it go for 65 days, it's going to form 
you know, the head that it's supposed to form. So these are actually really large heads and the recommended spacing is 12 inches. So I'm just going to, I'm going to plant one right in the middle. I'm going to put a few seeds in there and then thin them out when the seedlings get going. But there will be one nice big head growing right here, hopefully. But yeah, I'm just gonna drop a few seeds in there and then very lightly cover and we're done planting. And now I'm gonna show you the irrigation. Now I'm gonna set up my irrigation grid. It's all set up, but all you have to do is hook your hose right here and turn on your water source. And then just flip the switch. Just have to wait a couple minutes and then you can see that now every single square in this garden is being watered simultaneously. Do a little bit of some minor adjusting here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook my timer up to this and I did a video about this that I can link to this video if you want to check this out because this is my favorite timer right here and I'm going to hook this up to the water source and then hook my hose up to it and then I can set a timer for my watering grid. So this is so cool because you can actually control the amount of water that you're going to put into your bed. So you can monitor it and figure out, you know, how much water you actually have to put it in. There's a rain sensor on there so that if it rains, it will automatically halt your um, watering plan. So anyways, I have a whole video about that if you want to check that out. I will definitely um, use this to water this bed and it's going to be pretty much fully automated. So I'm very excited. Um, I also put a link in the description if you want to check out the Garden in Minutes um, raised beds. That's a 17 inch deep four by eight raised bed and the watering grid. And the watering grid can fit on any, um, any raised bed. So they're customizable depending on the size of your garden bed. Uh, this one's just a four by eight and you can see how perfectly it fits in there. Thanks for watching. I can't wait to show you how we're going to build our trellis and then plant our um, rattlesnake pole beans that we have started in the window.